Hello and welcome to First Kids Worship! First Kids Worship! Let's get started! Hey Spencer, can we talk to you for a second? Yes, please. Can you put the comic book away? It's kind of important. Alright, buddy. So you know how Dad's in the military? Yeah. And you know where we, we go, where they tell us to go? Yeah. Well, they told us that we need to move again. This is seriously big news. And what can I do? I could either do A, panic. <laughs> or B, hide, so they don't take me. Or C, go to my prayer closet while being wrapped around with your heavy blanket and pray. When we think about peace, we think of everything around us being serene and, and calm, but what about having peace when everything is all jumbled up around you. Well, we have an illustration for that for you for today. So we have this pipe and we have this paper towel and it represents you. Now, this is the world and you're in the world and what happens? Stuff happens. You might get a headache or your alarm. Oh, look. Anyone take it wasn't even hard. I was able to pierce that paper towel pretty quickly, huh? Well, when you find that stuff around you is just going cray cray, all you need to do is depend on God. And we have some salt here to represent God. So we have yourself, who's in the world, because what does it mean if we're not in the world? Yeah, we can't do any effect change. And just so I don't make a mess with the salt, we'll rub in there. And I'm gonna pour my piece, which comes from God, my representation of God being the salt. Now just because God is in my life, that doesn't mean that the world's problems disappear, does it? No. So what happens when the world's problems comes towards me and to my life? Wow, look at that. God totally protects me from these things. He gives me ways to get around it. He gives me strength. So remember, have God in your life, and you'll have peace. No God, no peace. Oh, and even better, God tells us to be the salt of the world. You could be the peacemaker when everything is world running around you. If you have friends that have a lot of drama, if they're gossiping, if they're arguing, if they're fighting, if they're just not having a good day, you could be salt of the world with God's peace.
Thanks for watching Life Tree Kids. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. Can't keep this in, gotta let it out. Gonna tell the whole world that your love is spinning me round and round. Yeah, it's turning me upside down. I can't believe the way you love me more than I can contain. I'm gonna turn around and give, give, give it away.
Dear God, thank you for being the peacemaker in my life. Remind me when everything is swirling around me. Job, school, family. When it feels like I can't get anything done right. Or everything's against me trying to accomplish just the smallest of things. Lord, you are my peace. Remind me of that on a daily basis. And Lord, give me the strength and the wisdom to bring peace to others. In your name, amen. I was alone out in the darkness, lost in the ocean. My sin Day after day The waves crash Over me Lord it's your light That draws me in I raise my hands to Time and time again No longer death in me You're my victory Lord, it's your life that draws me in I raise my hands to you for mercy
Hey guys, I'm Rachel. Welcome to our new series all about Moses. We're so glad you're here joining us this week. In this series, we are going to talk about some of the important lessons we can learn from different events that happened throughout Moses' life. We'll focus on the fact that no matter what we're going through or what we're feeling, we can always depend on God. Let's start by singing a song about our memory verse, which is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and love and self-discipline. Let's sing it together. That was a great song. Whenever we sing our memory verse, we can think about how God gives us the strength we need to get through any overwhelming or scary situation. Just like our memory verse says, God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. He gives us the strength we need to get through any hard situation. We don't have to be afraid because we have God on our side. To help us understand this, we are now going to watch a Bible story and hear more about Moses' life. Let's check it out. Stories of the Bible Baby Moses This is Moses hey Moses was a descendant of Joseph's brother Levi hey. Joseph and his brothers had many children and grandchildren who lived happily in Egypt Eventually, a new pharaoh came to power who knew nothing of Joseph or what he had done this pharaoh feared the Israelites because there was a great number of them living in Egypt, so he wanted to put a stop to their prosperity. Pharaoh made the Israelites slaves. He made them work long, hard hours building up Egyptian cities. But his plan didn't work, and the Israelites grew more in number and in strength. So Pharaoh made a rule that no Israelite boy would be allowed to live in Egypt. This is where Moses' story begins. You see, when Moses was born, his mother saw that he was a special baby. Hmm. And she kept him hidden for three months. <laughs> but when she could no longer keep him a secret, she made a basket and put him in the Nile River among the reeds. Moses' sister stayed to watch what would happen to her baby brother. And soon the Pharaoh's daughter came to the edge of the river. 
When she saw the basket, hey. she sent her servant to get it. When she saw the baby, she felt sorry for him, uh -huh. thinking he must be an Israelite baby who wasn't supposed to live. <laughs> Excuse me. Then Moses' sister asked the princess if she would like her to find an Israelite woman to take care of the baby. Uh -huh. So Moses' sister went and got her mother. Moses' own mother took care of him until he was old enough to live in the Pharaoh's house, where the princess adopted him as her son. And so, Moses, an Israelite boy who wasn't supposed to live, became the adopted grandson of the Pharaoh and lived in the palace as God prepared him for a great destiny that was only just starting to unfold. What a great Bible story! That Bible story helps us to better understand how we can always put our trust in God and take comfort in knowing that we are a child of God. God always gives us the strength we need to get through any scary or hard situation. Now let's continue to learn more about how we can always put our trust in God by watching Rewind, a show where we bring you the best and most viral videos that YouTube has to offer. Let's check it out and see what Caroline is up to this week. What's up everybody? My name is Caroline and this is Rewind. Rewind is a show where we compile the best videos that YouTube has to offer and show them to you, our loyal viewers. Why? Because sharing is caring and I care. Oh, I care. So let's get started. Today, I'm gonna to be playing a game called Out of Control. Oh, mm. I'm gonna be playing a game called Out of Control, LOL. Oh my goodness, this is a I'm gonna be playing a game called Out of Control, LOL. <laughs> on deck and I will subject my eyes to five of the supposedly most out of control videos online and rate them on my out of control little meter. Measuring each on a scale of one to five depending on how absolutely insane they are. One, not so crazy. Five, super crazy my mind is going to explode. So let's get started. Video number one. What is that? Is that a horse? Is he chasing this horse? How did this horse get out? Okay, he's got it, he's speeding up, get to him. Okay, we got him, we got him. Oh, we don't got him, we don't got him. Why are we stopping him? Why are we, you're so close. Just grab it. Horse secure, yes, mission complete. Wow, I'm pretty sure that's the first high speed scooter horse chase I've seen before. And I liked it, but I think on the out of control little meter, I'm gonna have to give him the two. I know it seems a little low, but hey, I can't give the first video a five. That's crazy. Next video, video number two. What are you throwing in your washing machine? Why would you do that? Also, what is he wearing? <laughs> oh my gosh, you turned it on? It's falling apart. Dude, turn it off. <laughs> what? This thing is out of control. This has gotta be it, right? <laughs> are you? Joking? This thing is literally walking itself across the yard. That was pretty out of control. I'm gonna have to give that a four on the out of control little meter. All right, next video, video number three. Oh my goodness, that dinosaur's moving. Oh my goodness, that kid is so fearless. That mom is so trusting. I would have ran by now. Are you kidding? Oh my goodness. Okay. Press on the pedal. Who let this little girl go. on a go-kart? Oh! <laughs> that kid's face with the dinosaur was priceless. Don't eat me, don't eat me. Oh. I mean, they were sort of crazy, but not really. So I'm gonna have to give it a two on the out of control little meter. Let's go with the next video. Video number four. Oh my goodness. Whoa, 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 whoa! Right off that 
ride, I would leave immediately. Dude, that was crazy. I've always wanted to do that at Disneyland. That was pretty out of control. So I'm gonna have to give it a four on the out of control over there. Now time for the fifth and final video. Let's do this. Next video, please. Video number five. Okay, they're rescuing someone in a helicopter. Okay, we're doing great. Pulling her up to the helicopter. Oh, easy. She's swinging a little bit. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This gurney is getting out of control. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Do you see how fast the thing's going? One, two, three, four, five. Whoa. Whoa. 78, 79. Whoa. Just one second. I'm good. I'm just getting sick looking at that video. That was pretty insane and definitely the definition of out of control. So I'm gonna have to give it a five on the out of control one. Here. That's right, video number five is the winner. That rescue basket the person was in was probably spinning like at least a hundred times. Hey, you know that rescue basket reminds me of another time that a basket was out of control. But instead of being spun a hundred times a minute, this basket had a baby inside and was floating down a river full of crocodiles. It's not a video that we can watch, but it might sound familiar to some of you. That's because it's from the story of Moses in the Bible. When you think of Moses, you might imagine an old guy with a big beard standing on a mountain holding the Ten Commandments. And you'd be right. But before all of that, Moses was a kid. And from the very beginning, God had a plan for his life. Moses and his family were descendants of Jacob living in Egypt. By this time, there were so many Israelites living in that land that it was starting to get pretty crowded. Pharaoh, the leader of Egypt, was afraid that the Israelites would outnumber the Egyptians and grow too powerful. So he ordered that all the Israelite baby boys be put to death. That's right. Crocodiles aren't the only crazy part of this story. Moses' mother couldn't bear to lose her son, so before the Egyptian soldiers arrived, she placed Moses into a basket raft and floated him down the Nile River. This was incredibly dangerous, but she trusted that God would protect him. As the basket floated down the river, Moses' mother sent his sister Miriam to watch and see what happened. Further down the river, Moses was found in the basket by Pharaoh's very own daughter. Isn't that crazy? Moses was discovered by the daughter of the very man who ordered Moses and all the other babies be put to death. In that moment, Pharaoh's daughter decided to raise Moses as her own, but she was going to need some help. When Pharaoh's daughter saw Miriam, she ordered Miriam to go and find an Israelite woman to help raise Moses. And who did Miriam choose for the job? Moses' mother. I know I keep saying this, but that's crazy. From the very start of his life, Moses' journey was shaped by trusting God. His story shows us that life can get pretty unpredictable, but no matter how out of control life might seem, God still has a plan. Sometimes life's craziness can be pretty funny, but other times some of life's turns can be pretty scary. For some of us, it might mean moving to a new part of the country or a family member getting sick. For others, it might be an argument between parents or losing a friendship. No matter what the uncertainties, they can make us feel like we're losing control. But that helplessness is the perfect reminder that we need to rely on God. He is the opposite of out of control. We see Moses' mother trusted God. Rather than given to her fear, she decided to trust God with the life of her son. And we see how God rewarded her trust by protecting Moses when he was a child. Not only did God protect Moses, but also worked it out so his mother would remain a part of his life. God is always in control, and he has a plan for each and every one of us. But most importantly, he loves each and every one of us. God doesn't want to see us worry, but that doesn't mean scary things will never happen to us. In life, nothing is certain, except for one thing, God. His love for us is unconditional, and his plan for our lives is foolproof. So if there's a time in the next week, month, or year where you feel like everything's out of control, remember to place your trust in God. No matter how out of control life gets, he will never let you down. All right, guys, we're just about done here. We'll catch you back here next week for another episode of Rewind. Wow, that was awesome. Just like Caroline said, even when we're going through some really hard times, we can take comfort in knowing that God is in control and that we can always ask Him for help. He promises to be there for us no matter what. Remember, God loves you and He cares for you. He'll never leave your side. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next time. Bye! Hello, for this craft you're gonna want this grass 
child basket thing. And I'm just gonna open this up. I'm gonna try. And the instructions. Use the picture as a guide. Adhere to adhere the pieces together as shown. Okay. There are no instructions. It's just tape it together. Okay. What are all the pieces? Is this the base? This looks like the base. A colored picture would be lovely. Wait, wait. <gasps> I think I see it. Okay. So you take this and you take that out. On this, you take this out. And then it's supposed to lay like that. And then, what is this? Why is this? Oh, that. Okay. You take this and you take these. Uh, and you stick one on each side. Whoops. There we go, and then and then you take this, and you put this in there, like that. <laughs> I'm just making sure it's all the way in. There, like that. And then, why does it feel like there are more pieces than actual places to put them oh okay <laughs> um, you, you, the big dark green one take that out it does not want to want to cooperate and it should not be sticky so it's the not sticky one see that that one's sticky this one isn't There we go. I had to rip it, sadly. And then... This. The two big ones. It's just... The grass just does not like me. Again, I had to rip it! Um... And then, can you please cooperate me with me for five seconds, paper? Okay, and then... I want this to go here. I don't think it particularly matters, because I think you're just kind of throwing it on there. At least I don't. Oh, it kind of does matter. I think this matches up with that. And that goes there. I don't know. They gave no instructions. I am winging this. They gave no instructions. Okay. 
then this looks like it goes here <laughs> and it does overlap whoops then you take this and you nope you stay there Okay, I, I did accidentally put this all the way down there. I don't think you were supposed to. So I have to force it in real quick. There we go. There. See? I'm just making sure it's all in. There we go. And then take the last four things. So the last of two each. Grass. And then you just put it on. And you put them in. And voila. And that is the craft. Great idea for Moses' mom and to save her baby by trusting in God. So I guess I'm going to pray to God now. God, help me be brave and help me make new friends. Amen. Also, what can you do to calm your out of controlness? <clears throat> Mine's going in my prayer closet while being wrapped around in my heavy blanket. What can you do? This is Spencer signing off. Bye! Thank you so much for joining us for First Kids Worship! First Kids Worship! See you next week!